in this video. We're going to be talking about some logo design best practices. Now, one of the coolest things you'll be able to do as a graphic designer is designing a logo, whether it's for your friend or for a giant company. It's always cool to see a logo that you've designed being used. And these tips are just some of my personal experience, what I've learned from designing logos over the years. My first tip is that you should always deliver variants of your logo. So if you have a full color version of the logo that you deliver, always also deliver a black version and a white version or maybe an alternate color design and those color options that you design should be the only versions of the logo that your client uses. Next up is the formats of your logo and before we jump into this, this video is sponsored by Envata Elements but we'll talk a little bit more about them later on. Now a format of your logo could be a full version of the logo where you have a glyph and you have type or text and also you can have an icon for your logo and you can break this down and use these where you see necessary. Best practice number three is scalability. Try and eliminate unnecessary design elements such as thin lines or spiky edges that just serve no purpose because you want to make sure that just as how you're viewing your logo on a computer screen and you can see it in all its glory. If you're putting it on a t-shirt and stitching that logo, you know most times when the stitchers are vectorizing your logo, they're not able to vectorize certain lines for the stitch. So try and keep your logo, as I mentioned earlier, free of unnecessary and just cluttering design elements. Best practice number four is brand guidelines. When you're designing logos and delivering what you've designed to your client, a cool thing to do is deliver a brand guideline as well. And brand guidelines usually have the color themes, you know, the primary colors, the alternate colors, as well as the hex codes of those colors. So whichever logo you design and whichever color you use, you have the privilege of naming that color. Brand guidelines also have typography you know the font that you use the spacing that should be in the font and whatever you put in your brand guideline well approved by the client obviously will be how the logo is used going forward so big brands like facebook instagram twitter etc whatsapp they all have brand guidelines and acceptable colors and placements for their logo so if these big companies are doing it you should follow suit and take a page out of their book and become more professional in presenting your logos. And I'll put a link in this video's description of a cool brand guideline article that I found online that you guys should definitely check out. Now, all of this talk of designing logos and best practices for designing these logos may be a bit intimidating for you. And if you don't necessarily have the time to design a logo or to design brand guidelines or choose colors for a brand or for your brand, Envata Elements is the perfect place to get a logo to get your brand off the ground. And it doesn't matter if you're a pro or a beginner in your field, once you want to level up your brand with a new logo, Envata Elements is the place to go. And it gets even better. Say you found a logo that you like on Envata Elements and then you change your mind and decided you want something else. No need to worry because a subscription from Envata Elements gets you unlimited downloads of logos. Yes no limit to how much you can download all you have to do is click the link in this video's description to get started with Envata elements right now so have you ever designed a logo before and implemented any of these best practices that we discussed here today if not let me know in the comments as well thank you thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video